Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really my pleasure to come here and share some of the research design on the so-called wearable, dissolvable tattoos. And it's really interesting in a way that we find it's really something we would like to use for treating of the daily uh, disease and also provide continuous monitoring. And the idea really comes from a strong motivation where most of us were running to, uh, actually some of us were running to the situation of car accident and this car accident will cause a lot of brain damage. In order to make sure where is the area that's damaged, where it's not, we typically use this so uh, famous uh, Utah array to probe the surface of brain tissue. And that will just make sure the nice mapping of the damage will be understood. But the bad thing is the penetration will need to go through the tissue and then cause the bleeding of the tissue simply due to the uh, incompatible interface between the spherical tissue and the pla uh, uh, planar geometry of the circuit. And that's why we come up with this design of flexible and deformable structure where we can laminate them onto the tissue surface and to minimize the uh, interface mismatch so that we don't need to get into the penetration and avoid the bleeding from the beginning. And it just for the record of uh, this deformable structure, we also want to have the capability to dissolve them inside human body since we have the desire to monitor the uh, condition of the internal organs and we definitely don't want to have a second operation to remove them after uh, the function is realized. So that's why we simply want to dissolve them after function. So uh, the, an example is, really from my personal story where my father fell out from a construction site uh, five years ago and broke four of his breast, uh, breast bones and doctor dragged him to the hospital and did a small surgery and the surgery operation is straightforward but resulted in a second operation to remove the bone healing structure to help support the bone healing and that's really something inconvenient and that's something we want to remove for the future patients. And the idea of wearable structure is now really something new. If we look into uh, the literature or even the uh, artistic funding, we will find, for example, a uh, famous artist, Salvador Dali, painted the famous uh, picture of that particular structure, for example, pocket watch to be flexible and the idea really to have the thin geometry. So here we simply use the same idea to minimize the uh, rigidness of this structure by reducing the thickness from the box structure to the nano scale. And that will allow us to have really flexible and deformed structure. So this really shows us how the uh, flexible uh, rigidity will reduce when we go from box structure down to nano scale. However, for a thin piece of paper is flexible but not stretchable. So what we want to do is to have, for example, an iPhone be stretched to an iPad and that will be something useful for the deployable structures and devices for the future. So that's why we want to have the stretchability. And this is not possible with a single piece of paper. So that's why we introduce the structure design in a way that we mimic the uh, spring shape, think about a straight wire, which is not stretchable. However, if we made that into a spring shape, it becomes stretchable. So these two basic concepts can be put together to make a structure into a stretchable design. For example, if we have silicon of ultra thin geometry, we laminate down to a rubber band pre-stretched to a certain degree, and the strong bonding will allow this delamination won't happen, and release of the pre-stretch will just allow the polymer go back to the original shape, resulting in a wavy geometry on the top surface. So that's why how we can make the structure into a stretchable design. However, that's really the first generation. What we want to do is something more advanced in a way we can design two-dimensional structure, actual stretchable. Uh, in this particular example, where we have actual stretchable battery that can be stretched over 300% by axially. It's connected to a red LED, and the LED is on all the time, indicating there's no degradation over time. And we can do this multiple of cycles, and that's really the second generation of our device. 
The idea is really the same as the first generation where we use ultra thin geometry for the battery. And also we have the spring geometry introduced here. And of the, let me find the, of our device, uh, the functional component are uh, placed in this island region. And in between, we use the flexible, uh, stretchable spring shape to connect them. So once you stretch and deform, the structure will be stretched because the internal spring shape will be stretched straight. So that's the basic idea behind. And in addition, what we can do is to further improve the mechanical robustness because all our devices are ultra thin and ultra soft. If you want to peel it off from the skin and reapply, you will run into problem to damage the device. So here we simply want to have the mechanical structure uh, uh, robust design. And the idea is also simple. We have this inspiration from the skin surface. If you play with the skin to stretch the skin like five to 10%, you will feel it's quite easy to do it. However, if you go beyond, you cannot stretch it further. It's really the fiber or the wavy geometry within the biological tissue that provides this protection. So what we do here is to introduce the same concept and to have the wavy geometry in our substrate. So in this way, we'll be able to provide a similar protection from the skin surface to make sure our device can be applied and peeled off from the skin surface multiple times. So whenever you go swimming, go to the activity, you don't want to have the continuous monitoring of the signal, you can peel it off and then reapply after you get back. So that's really why we want to have this kind of capability. And putting all of these basic components together, we will be able to have this simple demonstration to have this quadrator uh, to be controlled through our device in a way that we have the device on the forearm of the skin surface and the skin will be able to have the motion generated from the muscle and have the skin tattoo electronics to capture that motion and then translate into a command that can be used to control the quadrator to fly within the room. And it's really a simple demonstration where we only have three to four commands to take off, fly forward, make a rotation, come back, land the ground. But it's really a first step for us to show it's really capable to provide these kind of uh, options for the disabled where they can actually use this thing to control the object around them. And in addition, what we are into is also something beyond to have the continuous monitoring of the signal, for example, from temperature, heartbeat, a lot of uh, things uh, relevant to the biomedical and uh, biomedical condition so that we can have the continuous monitoring of different signals for the, uh, for example, aging population and a lot of people in need. Uh, let me then get back to the second concept where we can dissolve everything inside human body to eliminate the potential uh, second surgical operation. And what we have done is really to find the alternative materials we need to use that can be dissolved. The first one is the substrate, where it's really straightforward. We find, for example, silk is really FDA approved for a lot of biomedical application. And we can also have a lot of synthetic material to do the same job. So we can rest assured without any worry about that. As for the interconnect, they simply need to be providing the electric conduction. And we simply went to the drugstore and found out what we're taking every day. And what we found out is a lot of different options we can use, for example, magnesium, aluminum, zinc, tungsten, and we just pick magnesium in this simple demonstration. And the problem maker is the electronic component where we typically use silicon silicon oxide for high performance computing. And what we believe is there's the absolute uh, Nothing that is so stable cannot be dissolved. So what we have done is put this material into biofluids or even water and find out they are actually dissolvable. And the rate is so small. So if you imagine our device as, for example, Sears Tower in Chicago, really bulky structure. And that will just take 600 years to be dissolved. And if we shrink down the thickness from the bulky structure to the nanoscale, we'll be able to make sure that can be dissolved. And for example, here in a few bricks, they can be dissolved in a, about a couple of weeks. So that's the trick. And the video show here is simply to show how that device is dissolving over the first one minute and a half. And in the next one minute, let me just simply show 
how our structural device can be applied to something similar to Dr. Mary Fletcher mentioned, the origami design. We simply have the structural substrate uh, that is stretched 300 percent larger. And uh, what we want to do here is to introduce the device that is patterned in this 2D geometry. And then uh, we strategically make the bonding at the red dot, and then uh, we release the pre-stretch. The force generated from this release will just have a really large impact to generate 3D structure into a particular cornical shape, and that allows us to have this transformation. It's pretty powerful in a way that we can work with not only material that is, for example, uh, soft, but also with material that is traditionally impossible, such as semiconductors and the others. And with particular design here, for example, the blue ones will have a really nice collection of all different materials and designed into a 3D structure. And thank you so much for your attention.